this video what I want to do is just focus on the method of producing this effect. If you want any other background or explanations as to what's going on then look at the other videos on this topic. So the method, if you have your scene set up and you've rendered it out with depth of field what you need to do is switch to a side view and select the camera. Go to edit and copy the matrix of the camera then create a default Bryce cube and go to edit and paste the matrix of that cube. Now at the moment this cube is being modifiable in world space but it's going to have to be modified in object space which in this case is also camera space because we've copied the matrix. Also we need to make it hidden otherwise it'll block off the view of the camera. Now select all the other objects in the scene except for the camera and the cube and in their attributes link them to the cube so the cube is now a controller for these objects. Select the cube alone and then go to the edit menu and use the 3D transformation tool on the resize option and reduce their vertical y-axis by 50% and that will be 50% in camera space. These because they are the children of the cube will also adjust. So that's what we wanted. Switch back to your perspective camera view. Modify the document setup to a 2 to 1 ratio to compensate for the rescaling and render. At this point I'll just let it render. I'll pause the video, we'll switch over to the paint package and then I'll show you the final adjustment. So I'll just pause the video here. So here then is the image that has been rendered out and I'm going to resize it using my paint package and I'm going to make sure that I have some sampling when I resize it to take advantage of the double width. So this should smooth out my depth of field effect a bit better. So I'll resize it back to its original dimensions and then I'm going to bring in the original image so we can do a side by side comparison and there you go. Here it is with the normal depth of field effect with its circular bokeh which is what I understand it's called this uh, blurred area and here we have the anamorphic which is stretched vertically so you can see the effect is both subtle but it does have an interesting added depth to the the image with the effect on I think so there you go in less than two and a half minutes cheers now